Welcome to Highways. I'm your host, Demonte Edmonds. Each week, we bring you motivational and empowering messages to help you on your journey to life and help you get to the destination that God has predestined and predetermined for your life. Today, we have a special treat. Today, we're going to have an author. We're going to have a businessman. We're going to have a father. We're going to have a man of God. We're going to have someone that just wears so many coats in life and has done well and succeeded in so many areas in life. And so I'm excited to have the purpose pusher author of Big Purpose, Sean Ford, with us here today. Thank you, Sean, for coming on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it, Bishop. You know, I'm excited to have you on the show, you know, and how we met was just dynamic. I'll let you tell your part of the story, and then I'll tell my part of the story. Yeah. But I like to call you the Purpose pusher, pusher, because when we sat down and talked, one of the things that I heard in your heart is this, God has downloaded this message about the need for people to walk in their purpose. Mm -hmm. Not only the need for it, the power of it, the importance of it, Absolutely. and how it brings this alignment to just every facet of life, from family to, to job to career, everything. And so first, let's just tell the story of how it was purposeful, yeah. how we met. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, for me, you know, it was an interesting day because, you know, my wife, she's so amazing, so gracious. I did something that I don't think she's done in 15 years of marriage. <laughs> and she said, Sean, today, and it was a weekend, I need you to put on your Carbiza shirt. Yes. My answer was yes, ma'am. <laughs> so we go to the mall, you know, it's a typical day enjoying myself with family. And I think uh, we met at Sabaro's, it was. Yes. And you said, uh, Carbizas, tell me about your shirt. I was a little coy or a little shy at the time. I said, well, you know, it's my YouTube car channel yes. where I talk about cars and business. And your exact phrase was, well, I'm more interested in the Jesus part, <laughs> right? So yes. ultimately that was an invitation. And when I shared what I shared with you, you know, what you said was, um, and I'll let you share that part, okay. was powerful because I think personally for me as a spirit-filled believer, one of the things that I've learned in my 38 years of journey is the power of obedience. Yes. I was obedient to what my wife said, right? I followed through and then God showed up in a way as to how you and I met. So Definitely. I'm thankful. So tell your part, man, because your part is probably better than mine. Now, I don't know if it's better, but it's, it's just as you know, equally powerful. But you let said something as well. Yeah. I think, because you're, you're a husband, and you love marriage, you love family from talking Absolutely. to you. You've done well in those dimensions. Absolutely. But sometimes men don't realize that God can speak through their wives. So even though it was your wife, ultimately it was God speaking through her. Absolutely. And I believe a lot of men miss it when God brings wisdom through their wives. Do you agree with that? No, I do. You know, the thing about it is, is, you know, you have to understand that while as a, as a husband and as a father, you know, I'm to be a protector, you know, a provider, a prophet in the house, your wife has a certain level of wisdom and discernment as a woman that as a man, uh, it makes you more of a man, right? To <laughs> yes. be uh, uh, in, in servanthood, you know, to your wife equally, because, you know, when God joined us together, he said one flesh. So ultimately, if you give me some direction, good or bad, it's only important that I at least consider and understand because there have been times like that among others where my wife's wisdom was a game changer. Yes. And and I wouldn't have had certain opportunities had it not been for that mutual obedience. And so you and I meeting was just one of them. Yes. And so my part of it, I was home praying. I went down to my basement. I began to pray. And I just felt from the Lord, you know, we're new to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I want to meet the right people. And sometimes you don't know who the right people are. Yeah. And you don't even know that some of these people exist. I said, Lord, I want to meet the people that's purposeful for our assignment here and, you know, us being planted here. And right after prayer, the Lord told me, go to the mall. He didn't wow. tell me to purchase anything. He just said, go to the mall. Wow. I didn't connect it to the prayer. I yeah. just thought, you know, I'm going to the mall. Maybe I have a word for someone or something Likewise. of that way. Yeah. And so when I get to the mall, I'm at Sabaro's. I look over and the Lord told me to speak to you. I said, speak to him about what? He didn't tell me anything. So when I saw your shirt, if you just opened yeah, it up yeah. a little bit, Carbizas, mm -hmm. it said cars, business, and Jesus. And that's when I started to talk about Jesus. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because this is one of the, I think this is so cool. Yes. You know, um, I've done some fishing, not a lot of it, and I wouldn't call myself a fisherman. But God's giving you this kind of fisherman tool and tactic and methodology, but it's also really cool because break down Carbizas for us and how God gave that to you as a, a purposeful, so winning to, and to get a positive message out. 
Yeah, yeah. So um, the word car business is a, really a play on three words, cars, business, Jesus. And so what I did was created a YouTube channel uh, where I talk about cars that people love, oftentimes including, you know, my own, you know, cars, whether it be a Tesla or my Aston Martin and other cars that we're planning to purchase, but also like to really give some perspective or background on how you can, you know, whether you be an employee or whether you be an entrepreneur, can operate in certain businesses that will afford the passive income to do these kinds of things. But more importantly, you know, DeMonte, it's all about using the cars and the business proponent as a platform to evangelize about the gospel of Christ. And so how Car Bezos even came into being is one day in my personal prayer time, Anyone who knows me, I've always been fascinated by cars. Not because <laughs> it was a symbol, but because I enjoyed the history, the innovation, wow. the art of the car. Yeah. And so I told the Lord uh, many years ago that if you ever bless me with a desire of my heart, which is an exotic car, you have my word, I will honor the kingdom. So what I did at that time, yet again, getting back to that theme of obedience, is years before I even got these exotic cars, I actually had a custom license plate frame Two of them made. One said, Jesus is king. The other said, Jesus is Lord. For exotic <laughs> cars that I didn't even own yet. By faith. By faith. Yeah, you were being purpo purposeful. Yeah. Purposeful. I, and I kept them. And when the Lord, you know, prospered our businesses to the point where we were able to buy those things debt free, because that was another proponent. I didn't believe it was God's <laughs> provision if I had to finance it. Yeah, right? for and an exotic car. For yeah. an exotic car. So, you know, ultimately, when he blessed me with it, the very first thing, and as much as I enjoy the art of the car, what I am most proud of to this day is actually the license plate frame. When people want to look at the car inside, outside at a car show, I say, yeah, the car is great, but let me show you the best part. And I walk them to the back. Yeah. And what God has done in terms of my ability to be a fisher of men, to preach the gospel of Christ in very cool, casual ways has been done at car shows. And I'm thankful for it because I honored my word, but I think I'm thankful that God honored you know, what my request was. Definitely. And that's ministry in the marketplace. You know, sometimes people put themselves in the box. They say, well, I'm not an apostle, a yeah. bishop, a preacher. You don't have to be behind a pulpit. Absolutely. You don't have to hit people with 20 scriptures. Sometimes it's in the testimony. And that's a testimony. When you have to ask the Martin, how did you get it? Well, I, I fasted. I prayed. I sought the Lord. Lord gave me this business plan, gave me this business model. And that's your testimony mm. that can pull people in. Now, you have an interesting story about somebody saw your Aston Martin and they saw the license plate. I think it was a delivery person. I'll let you tell that story. And you began to minister to him about Jesus. Absolutely. So, you know, whether it be a child who tells me at a car show, you know, you make Christianity look cool, or whether it be, you know, guys who I've met that own, you know, $2 million, you know, uh, uh, Bugattis, <laughs> yeah. their point was, is, you know, we rarely see someone demonstrate their faith. And, and I gain boldness from how you go about it because typically really successful believers feel a need to hide, wow. uh, you know, their prosperity to the world, even to the ministry as well. Um, but an example of always being led by obedience is, you know, one weekend I'm watching, you know, the Aston Martin and there's a young man, uh, you know, who's a UPS driver and he makes a beeline for me. And I understand I have a responsibility in that moment. His very first statement was, this is literally my dream car. Wow. And I said, excellent. I said, you ever been in one? He said, no, sir. <laughs> I said, get in. He said, no, really. I said, no, get in. I let him sit in it. He said, wow. I never thought something was like, like this was possible. Yep. You made me believe that this is possible. So we get out the car again. I say my classic line, let me show you the best part. <laughs> I show him the license plate frame. Immediately begin to minister to him because I understand I have a responsibility. And the reality of it is, and this is no disrespect to the body of Christ, but oftentimes, right, we teach about this merciful, wonderful, gracious God. And while there's a season to our, our harvest and while there's a process Definitely. to how we go about obtaining it, it's important that non-believers are able to see, you know, prosperity, which means to be whole in all 58 areas of your life. Money is just one of them because Definitely. I can't take it with me. And so I understand that really I'm not the owner of these things. I'm a steward. And in my stewardship, I'm going to always divert the limelight and the attention right. to really where it all begins and ends, which is our walk with Christ. That's powerful. Now, I want to jump into your book. You wrote Big Purpose. Yeah. 
And so I looked at the book and I went through it three times and some very powerful statements. Um, tell us what led you to write Big Purpose. Yeah, so, um, you know, for me, I don't come from, you know, the best background. You know, I grew up in the hood, um, you know, um, you know, my mother and father got divorced at a young age when my mother was diagnosed with MS. Oh, wow. Um, you know, he literally dropped my mother and I, as well as my sister, off at home and just never came back. Wow. And so while that was the reality of my upbringing, at the end of the day, I used all of these negative circumstances from what I saw uh, with my father, among others, as an example of what not to do. And so ultimately what that meant is I didn't know what I wanted to become, but I just knew I wanted to do something, something great. important in life. Oh, and so I did like most people. I thought that, you know, by buying my first house at 21 and, you know, buying cars and, you know, going on vacations and having the best of everything was going to be really fulfilling. fulfilling. Yeah. And it wasn't because while I was raised in the church, I can honestly say, you know, DeMonte, that I was just a casual Christian, right? <laughs> like I even tithed, I prayed, I went to church, but I really... You did the motions. I did the motions, the motions, but it yeah. wasn't important to me. Yeah. Just to be honest, it wasn't my first priority, I should say. I think to really get into your purpose, yeah. you have to be very intentional about pursuing God for your purpose. Absolutely. So what I did is after uh, a season of time, about five years doing really well in business, uh, the market collapsed uh, roughly around 2008. Um, I was, uh, you know, owning a lot of investment properties, ended up being stuck, you know, with <laughs> several mortgages that when I didn't have a tenant or couldn't find a buyer, you had to take care of. I had to take care of. So it created, quite frankly, financial devastation. Yeah. Um, what I did really in my, my most difficult financial moment is I said, okay, like my mama always taught me about Jesus. <laughs> Maybe it's time for me to start getting serious about yeah. it. So it was the month of December in 2008, you know, I began to pray and fast specifically for, Lord, what's my purpose? Literally on January 7th, 2009, I heard the voice of God speak to my heart and say, speaker, author, entrepreneur on a discovery and fulfillment of life purpose. I had never heard his voice before and had never heard his voice like that since. Wow. I was confused, but I was intrigued. Yeah. So... Yep, so what I did is I made a commitment. I said, you know what? I'm gonna start reading an annual Bible study plan because I don't know where to start. Definitely. And I'm gonna find every biblical scripture of what it has to say about life purpose. Now, let me ask you this, because there's some people that's watching. They may be frustrated, they may be discontent. They may be going through the motions of life, going through the motions of Absolutely. doing church. Yeah. What is one of the first steps they can take to disconnect from, because when you're living an unpurposeful life, mm -hmm. it's frustration. It's so many emotions and things that come at you. But when you get in your purpose, even when hardships come, you still have this joy. You still have this, you know, this forward thinking. You can see your way out. Yeah. And you know God is with you in a different type of way. Absolutely. So what is the first thing you would tell someone that, hey, I've been living life, but I know I'm not in my purpose. What's the first thing that you would tell them? My start? recommendation would be is until you know who God is, you never know who you are. That's powerful. That's so true. for me, it meant finding God for myself, not what my pastor told me, but what does God's word say from Genesis to Revelation in all 66 books? Yeah. And so for me, I would uh, suggest that, you know, doing an annual Bible study plan, while that might seem aggressive, all it takes is about 15 minutes a day, surprisingly. You know, the Bible app, great example. You read three chapters a day, and if you do that 365 days, even if you miss or skip a day, you can always catch up. <laughs> you will have read the Bible in its entirety in that one year. So I'm now celebrating literally my 13th anniversary of having done that, and my wife uh, and all three of my boys participate as well because it really had it not been for God's word uh, showing me how to really not look for hope and joy in the world, yeah. but understanding that I can encourage myself with the word, I don't know where I would be, especially in a season that we're in now as a country. So you mentioned in your book as well, at first, you looked at some motivational techniques, you know, there's all these great motivational speakers and visualization, and I think that those things have their place and have their purpose. Yeah. But when you do those things outside of the context of God, it's like just putting a Band-Aid on the wound. Absolutely. And so... There are some people that they're doing all of these other things and they need to put God first. Yeah. What's some things you can suggest for them as well? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, like I point out in, you know, Big Purpose, when you are motivated, right, with the wrong motivation, <laughs> you just get more of the same mess. That, say that again. Yeah, so 
when you are highly motivated, right, yes. to do more of the same <laughs> things, it ends up as a mess. Wow. And so ultimately by starting with the word is where you get to cut through the clutter because as I point out in the book, I thought the surest way to success DeMonte was duplicating someone else's life. Right. Well, if Donald Trump is investing this way, then maybe I should do that, too. Well, if P. Diddy is doing it this way, maybe I should do that, too. Now, I want to jump in yeah. because in your book, you're talking about motivational gifts, how we're each graced and gifted differently. Absolutely. So that ties into your where you talk about those giftings, because someone's doing it that way. We may not be graced that way. Absolutely. So you feel that people need to find their gifting and their grace. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what I point out is. You know, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me is there are really three simple steps on how you position yourself to hear the voice of God. Doesn't mean he can't speak to you in other ways, but it reduces the clutter. So uh, we, we call it a MAP, MAP for life. MAP is an acronym. M stands for motivational gifts. Um, it comes from, you know, the book of Romans, Definitely. chapter 12, where what we're told is that We've all been given a gift according to the grace given to us. This is in Romans chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 6, and that we are to use the gift. And then the word begins to explain seven specific gifts. Now, here's the thing about the gifts. We all have a little bit of them all, yes. but we all have a primary gift. So as an example, one of the gifts is an exhorter. An exhorter means to be an encourager. That's what I am. Definitely. I, I'm sure you can tell through the broadcast. I don't, I, this is, a, I haven't learned how to do this. This is how I was wired. And so God created you the way you are because of why you are. Yes. And your motivational gifts as a believer is really the first monumental foundational building block to know that this is what God has deposited in me. This is what I can give to the world. Definitely. And motivational gifts is the answer. You know, I laugh at my grandmother. We go to her house and she won't sit down. She has to cook. Even when we say we're not hungry, we just She's say, a server. Cook. She's a server. Absolutely. Her gift is serving. I mean, she has to do something for you. She has to do something for you. That's her gift. And so Correct. we're trying to put her in this box, but that's what God's deposited in her. Now, another powerful thing that I think has helped to catapult you and business and life and ministry, all these different areas that you're involved in is mentorship. Now you were mentored personally by the great Dr. Miles Monroe. Yes, sir. Just give us uh, how that impacted your walk and how that impacted everything that you've, you know, been doing with your big purpose. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the first things I mentioned, right, is my life really can be summarized out of one phrase or one word, obedience. Amen. So um, when God had revealed that life purpose to me during one of my prayer times, you know, in January 2009, um, Holy Spirit told me to reach out to a friend of mine's named Regan. And so I called Regan. I said, the Lord told me to call you. I need to be mentored by Dr. Monroe. Can you help me? <laughs> that was all I said. Now, mind you, I had had a desire to be mentored by Dr. Monroe 10 years before because an uncle of mine had given me a tape series when he had visited one of his leadership conferences. Awesome. So the funny thing of it is, I remember even saying at 17, I'm going to be mentored by Dr. Monroe one, one day, one way, but I don't know for what. <laughs> but it just, it was, it was the, in, heart. It was in my heart. Put it there. He put it there. Yes. When I reached out to Regan and told him that, he said, I'll call you back in 10 minutes. I didn't know what to think. Literally 10 minutes later, I get a call from Dr. Monroe's assistant, who was also his sister, uh, Dr. Sheila Francis. She says, I'm told that you would like to be mentored by Dr. Monroe. I said, yes, ma'am. She said he would be honored to. Wow. What then said about, you know, uh, uh, he had a very uh, systemized mentorship program where there were fulfillments and duties that you had to complete on a monthly basis, and you were also required to visit with him twice a year. And I made sure out of obedience that I not only completed the task, but always went on a minimum every six months to really spend time in fellowship. And of course, one of the uh, you know, gracious gifts he gave me was to forward my book, which I'm eternally grateful for. And I, and I read that powerful forward as well. Thanks. Now, something else that you talk about in your book, and I think for me, evangelizing people and teaching them about the gospel and sharing them about coming into the plan of God for their life, sometimes people are hesitant because they see God in this box. And you mentioned how people feel if they surrender to God, they submit to God, and they come into this kingdom walk, that it's going to oppose the desires yep. that they have. It's going to propose the view that they think they have for that. It's going to be in opposition to, you know, things they may want to do in life. So can you speak to that for us as well? 
Well, I mean, I can speak to it because I felt the same. I did too. Uh, you know, initially. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what I found, and I know you agree, is as I shared with you privately, you know, God will never demand of you what he didn't already deposit into you. Yes. Um, and so I know, you know, it sounds like a, a cliche statement, but it, but it is absolutely the truth. And so that's why when you understand that we all uh, in our map for life have a motivational gift which God has deposited. The A stands for ability, and then P stands for passion. Yes. Passion is probably the most misunderstood. People think that a passion is an interest or a hobby, but it's not. Yes. A passion is, if you look it up in the dictionary, it surprised me what the word passion is defined by in Webster. And it says suffering or pain. Wow. So the passion of the Christ. There you go. Yeah. Is a suffering. So what I need to know is what are my motivational gifts, right? Get before the Lord. The details are on my book as to how you find out which of the seven gifts is your primary. An ability is like a, 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 an innate ability, superpower that you have that's very unique. There's 15 different ones. My book shows you how the passion in terms of being a, a suffering or something that causes you pain is what makes you upset. Yes. Why? Because God designed you to be the solution to it. Yes. Once you understand these things, and, and really the truth is, DeMonte, I am simply a tour guide in the book, <laughs> right? And you talk be about that, yes. Yeah, because there's no limit to how the Holy Spirit can minister to you. Yes. What it's about is God is always speaking, but we don't know how to listen. He uses processes. Absolutely. I, I don't care if it's Moses, if it's you, if it's this one, Dr. Miles. He uses a process. There you go. And... The road that we take may be a little bit different, but the processes are the same. Absolutely. And so some people right now are in the midst of a process and they're kicking against the very thing God is trying to use to get them to their destination. And I think as well, sometimes as you get into this process, life takes an opposite turn. You talked about how it looks like financially things were bottoming out for you, yeah. but God used that to work, work it in your favor. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the thing about it is, um, and again, I'm an exhorter teacher, right? So all I know how to do is encourage and teach you. <laughs> you know, what I've learned in my 38 year journey thus far, and I haven't figured it all out, is that every obstacle always produced my greatest opportunities. Yes. I mean, it's almost scary how that <laughs> plays out. And it's not because I wasn't, it wasn't, it's not because it wasn't possible for God to reveal that, but I was the hindrance. And so many times we try to impose our will, really kind of treating, you know, God like Santa Claus, where we put in a wish list yes. and we bet I better get this or else. Yes. And what I found <laughs> is that my greatest opportunity in my faith walk has been a simple prayer. Lord, let your perfect will be done. Powerful prayer. Right. And, and when you begin to really understand your responsibility yet again is just to be obedient and stop trying to figure out the results of your life. It produces a peace that I can't explain. It produces a prosperity that I can't explain. Is obedience is my only requirement. His job is the result. And so when you talk about these sorts of things of being stuck, yep. just being obedient to s silence the voice, still yourself to hear from the Lord, you'd be amazed. I dare somebody to do it. And I think now a lot of people are, they heard the word obedience, yep. suffering, surrender, submission. Wow. Those are like bad words. <laughs> but for me, surrender, submission, obedience, that's my safe place. There you go. Because I know if I surrender to God, he's going to take the burden off of me. Absolutely. I know if I surrender to God, he's going to take over. Because I've tried trying to figure it out, trying to map it out, trying to, you know, budget it out. And, and it wears you out. All of those things. But when you surrender, God says, look, do this. And it's going to connect you to the answers. And it takes the weight off of you. Absolutely. There's so many people who have blood pressure, anxiety, depression. And I believe God just wants them to surrender and say, God, I'm, w I'm, I'm willing to be obedient. Isaiah talks about that. No. If you're willing and obedient, yeah. you'll eat the good of the land. Absolutely. Now, you're, you're a father and you got three you know, wonderful sons as well. Well, how does being purposeful play into your family life and your household? Yeah, so... You know, you have to understand, and, and Dr. Monroe used to always say this. He, he used to say that until the purpose of a thing is known, it's abuse. abuse is inevitable. Yes. Until the purpose of a thing is known, abuse is inevitable. Definitely. So what I understand from the word, right, is that the purpose of life, we're told by Jesus in the book of John, is to glorify God by doing the work he sent us to do. Absolutely. So that means I'm going to behave and think and act a certain way. When you talk about a marriage or as a parent, the purpose of a marriage is to help each other mutually 
find yes. and fulfill your purpose. And the same responsibility as a father is my wife and I's greatest responsibility is to help our sons find and fulfill their God-given purpose. So as parents, we've already identified, right, by just being around them, what yep. their motivational gifts are. Uh, and we're still in the process of uncovering what their unique ability is. We got an idea. Yep. And then last but not least, what makes them upset is something that you figure out as over the process time. of life Definitely. over time. So really when we steward our children, uh, it's in the context of helping them to fulfill their purpose because that's our mandate as parents. That's powerful. And as well, well, we have a quick minute left here. If you can tell us where can people get the book Big Purpose? and tell them how to hit your YouTube channel. Tell them the absolutely. name again of the YouTube channel while we got a quick minute here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, bigpurposebook.com, uh, you can buy physical copies or the ebook version through Apple. Uh, and then for Big Purpose, you can subscribe to Big Purpose on YouTube, Carbizus is C-A-R-B-I-Z-U-S. I would be honored to connect with you as you follow our journey, as we talk about cars, business, Jesus, uh, and certainly look forward to meeting you at car shows as well. Thank you, Sean, for coming on the show. It's Thank been you, powerful. Sorry, I appreciate and it. Maybe next time it'll be helicopter visas. Yeah. <laughs> who knows what God, God's doing some great and big things with us as well, I with see. you as well. And I'm excited what he's doing in your life and definitely will help you back. Thank you. So listen, guys, we talked today about the importance of knowing your purpose, the importance of understanding your purpose, but most importantly, the importance of walking in your purpose. And it all starts with knowing God. Colossians talks about our life is hidden in Christ. And when Christ appears, our life appears with us, with him. So let me tell you this. The closer you get to God, the closer you hit the mark on finding out who you really are. There are so many people walking the earth right now. They're working in jobs. They're working in careers. They're living lives that God never intended for them, that God never predestined for them. And that's why it's this disconnect. It's this discouragement. But as you are intentional and you take time to seek the Lord and to spend time with him and to ask him, God... I'm going to challenge you. Ask God this. I don't care if you're a celebrity or entertainer, whoever you are, a business person. I want you to say, God, what is my true purpose? What is the purpose that you put me in the earth? And then I want you to do this. Be open. Maybe it's going to come through a dream. Maybe it's going to come through a commercial. Maybe it's going to come through God speaking to your heart. Maybe it's going to come some other way. But be an expectation that God is going to reveal to you that purpose. And as he does, don't be afraid to step out in faith and begin to pick up big purpose and pick up the Bible and connect with people that can help you be mentored to walk in that purpose because as you walk in your purpose, God has peace for you. He has joy for you, and he's going to bring you into a better place. So I'm your host, Demonte Atmos with Highways. Tune in every week and check out our broadcast as we are power and equip you to walk in your purpose.